This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I'd like to talk about the Avid Attic because I've gotten a few questions by email lately surrounding the attic. More specifically, one was where can I actually find the attic on Windows and on Mac? But I want to get in, I want to talk about how we're going to set things up to get rolling in the attic, then where we can find it. And then I want to talk about some general things that you're going to want to keep in mind whether you're working on the standalone version of Media Composer or whether you're working in a shared environment like on Interplay because there's a couple of things that you need to know that are exceptionally important. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer and Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And I'm gonna head to my settings first of all because basically we're gonna get into our bin settings to start setting up our autosave which is directly going to impact how things are set up in the attic. So let's come to our bin settings. Now something that's important to keep in mind about the bin setting is that it is a user setting, meaning it's directly tagged to you, the user. So this is gonna vary slightly based on whoever happens to be the editor, in this case it's me, who is set up to be editing. So what I'm gonna do is come to my bin settings and let's first of all head right down here to these last two parameters right towards the top, which is the maximum files in a project's attic and the maximum versions of a file in the attic. Now, what exactly do these represent? Well, the maximum number of files is fairly self-explanatory. At any given time in the attic, you can have a thousand files, okay? Now, how that's gonna be broken down is based on how many bins you have in the project, what your autosave is set to, et cetera, et cetera. But obviously, once you hit that maximum file number, it's gonna start overwriting the older versions of your bins with a newer version of your bin. Now, in this case, I've got a few bins. Now, I'm not gonna close out of my bin settings just yet. I think I got about five or six bins in this project. So I'm gonna show you how that's set up in just a second. Now, I'm gonna set my autosave interval to be something a little bit higher than this. One, I think, is a little bit ridiculous. Normally, I have my autosave interval set to be somewhere around five minutes because at the speed that I edit at, I can actually get quite a lot done in five minutes. Now, if you're new to Media Composer, maybe not just that quick of an editor in general, you might wanna set that to be a little bit longer. Again, like I said, you're gonna to wanna to set it based on how quickly you work inside a Media Composer. So now that I have the autosave interval set to be every five minutes, you'll see that the maximum versions of a file I can have in the attic is 50. Now that's of any given bin. So for example, if I have a bin called sequences, the maximum number of versions of that bin called sequences I can have is 50. So if it's auto-saving every five minutes for 50 bins, that's 250 minutes. So that's gonna get you a little bit over four hours worth of backup. So keep that in mind, okay? Now, what I wanna do now is I wanna move on and I wanna show you where we're going to find the attic. Now, you'll, you know, it's fairly self-explanatory that I am on a Mac. So what I'm going to do on my Mac is I'm gonna to head to the Macintosh HD. I'm going to come to my users folder and I'm gonna to come to the shared folder. Inside of the shared folder, you'll see that I have a folder called, appropriately enough, Avid Media Composer. And inside of this folder, I have the Avid Attic. Now, what I'm gonna do is put the location of the attic for all of you Windows users on the screen right now. Now, something else that's very important to keep in mind. Let me just head back into Media Composer here for one second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna head back to the root project selection window. Now, once I'm back at the project selection window, you're gonna notice that my project setup right now is set to view external projects. If I was to switch over to private projects, you'll see that I only have specific projects that are located inside of my specific folder on the Mac, or if you're on Windows, it's gonna be located inside of your specific login on the Windows machine. But what's important to keep in mind is that the attic doesn't care 
who is logged in and who's using it. So I'm just going to head back into this project for one second. Actually, before I do that, let me just show you that I did create a private project called, appropriately enough, Test Private Project. Okay. If I come back to external, I'm just going to come back into this project that we were working on. And let's say an editor was working on something and for some reason they created a private project and I couldn't get access to it, but I really needed access to it. There's a bit of a roundabout way that you can do this. And what I can do is just hide Media Composer. I can come into the addict and you're going to see that inside of the addict, I actually have a folder if I twirl all of these up here called test private project and it's located right here. I should sort this in alphabetical order so that we can actually see where it would fall in. There's that test private project attic folder. So conceivably I could actually go in and pull a sequence bin right out of there if I want to. Now, we're not going to be doing that because what I want to do is I want to come into the project that I'm currently working on, which is the Let's Edit with Media Composer project. I'm going to twirl that down. You'll see there's a folder called bins. Now, each bin that occurs inside of the project, so each bin that I've created, is going to get its own folder because you'll remember that I said that there could be a whole bunch of different versions of a specific bin. So I'm going to use the consolidate bin as an example. Now inside of Media Composer, if I come back in here, here is the consolidate bin right here. Uh, I've got a few projects in here, nothing too crazy, or a few clips in here, nothing too crazy. And I'm just going to close this up because what I want to do is head back to the desktop and I'm going to come back into that consolidate folder and you'll see that I actually have nine versions of this bin, including one from today at 12.25 p.m. Now, I'm not going to grab that one. I'm actually going to grab this one only because nothing's really changed since I opened that bin today. Now, normally what people do at this point when they want to get stuff out of the attic is they start dragging it to the desktop. Now, for me, I never do that. I'll always copy and paste it. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that by copying and pasting it onto the desktop, it's obviously going to be in a place where it's going to be given access for anybody to come in and be like, oh, what's this you know, file on the desktop? Let's just delete it. And you may have put some files into this bin that you might need. So keep that in mind. What you might even want to do is head back into your project, into the actual Let's Edit with Media Composer project, give this bin a name called maybe Consolidate underscore Addict and stick it in the project that way. But for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to copy this and put it on the desktop. And I am going to do what I said which is call this consolidate underscore attic. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to head into Media Composer. Now, once in Media Composer, I can, of course, much like any other bin, just say open. Let's head to the desktop. Let's grab that consolidate dot attic. Now, you're going to notice that it is grayed out. Now, why would that be? Well, let's just cancel out of this for one second. Let's head back to the desktop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tag this bin as being a dot AVB file. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that chances are on Windows, you're probably going to have to do the same thing. Now, I'm going to come back in here. Let's come back to the desktop. And you'll see now that I have now have access to this bin. Let's now say open. And here's the bin with the exact same clips that I had before. But we now have a problem. I don't know if anyone remembers the movie Time Cop with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Two items can't occupy the same space at the same time that are from different times. So if I open this bin from the attic and now I try to come and open the consolidate bin, you're going to see that I get an error. And I'm going to be told by Media Composer, hang on a second, you already have a copy of this bin open. So you can't open the previous bin. So in most cases, what you'd have to do is say, okay, and let's just say I'm going to go with this ProRes same as source. I'm going to call this ProRes same as source, appropriately enough, attic. Okay. I'm just going to open any bin. It doesn't matter which one it is. We're going to take this and I'm going to copy it by holding Option or Alt into this bin. I'm now going to close the attic bin. I'm going to delete it from the other bins because I'm not going to need it. I only needed to get this one sequence out of here. Now I'm going to open Consolidate. And I'm going to put it in there. And now I've got everything back from being from the dead, supposedly, by simply getting that bin out of the attic, changing the extension to .avb, opening it, and bouncing that sequence from one bin to another. Now, there's something exceptionally important that I need to point out, especially for anyone that's using Interplay. Okay, in the situation that I just gave you, now let's just make sure, yeah, I do. If I come back and I open this bin from the desktop, okay, as soon as you open a bin from the desktop, the first rule of interplay that I was always taught was never use the command and O option to open a bin. You're always going to open bins through interplay. You're only going to open bins that were created by interplay through interplay. Never do a command O or control O for my Windows friends. 
This is the only situation where you can do a command or control O to get something out of the attic. But the situation that I did where I took one sequence and I moved it out of this bin into another one is exactly how you do it except for one big difference. And here it is. Once you've gotten the sequence out of this attic bin and you've got it into another bin, don't close this bin. The instant you close this bin, now I've got you know five items, so it's not that big a deal, but if I had a thousand items in this bin, the instant I close this bin, all those items are going to get checked into interplay. And we don't want that. We only want that one sequence that we brought back from the dead being checked into interplay. So what you're going to do before you close this bin is select everything, select it all, and delete it. Now I'm not going to delete the associated media files because I actually need those media files with my consolidate bin. So I would just do this, and once I close this bin, the attic bin, it's not going to get checked into interplay. Okay, so I hope this shows you how you're going to get in, start using the attic, you know, first of all, where you're actually going to find it, how you're going to get your bin set up with your autosave, so it's autosaving at the interval you want, also how you're going to make sure that you have enough bins being backed up, so if you got to go back in time a little bit, you're always going to be covered, and that quick tip at the end for all you interplay users, the last thing you want is all of this extraneous media being checked in if you're constantly going back to the attic, it can become a real pain and cause a real mess. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris Effects is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi host licenses full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.